How's it going guys? In this video, I'm gonna be doing out my top tips on buying a vehicle in a different country. Okay, so with all the changes I've had in the last while, moving abroad and all of the complications and stresses that comes along with moving to a different country, the starting work, um, looking for a house, moving away from family and trying to get set up, which includes a vehicle. I decided because of my knowledge in this industry, I would give my top tips that I think can save you a lot of money and time when buying a vehicle in a different country. Okay, so the first thing I look for, and this is definitely number one on the list, is get a vehicle that is common to that country. What you do not want to do is go into the market and pick out a rare car that is difficult to get parts or the parts are extremely expensive or that if you aren't a mechanic that people don't want to work on the vehicle so you're bringing it to workshops and they're like no don't want anything to do with that don't know about the car don't know about getting parts and they want to wash their hands of it so my number one tip is always to get a vehicle that is common to that market Number two is know the climate. So if you're moving to a very hot climate, make sure that your air con is working. If you're moving to a cold climate, make sure that your heater is working because them are two things that are gonna make your driving experience a lot more comfortable. Um, moving to Oz, we have both, but the air con is far more uh, important. So making sure the air con was working 100 percent making sure that there was no leaks in it make sure that it was getting icy cold really fast very very important but also knowing that over in winter here that it does get quite cool and you want to be able to clear your windscreen and all that fast and keep your kids uh, comfortable when they're in your car the heater was also important so make sure when it gets up to hop, uh, when it gets up to operating temperature that everything is good and make sure that your heater warms up use all all speeds on the um, climate control or your um, blower motor heater make sure that they're all working and that is another tip so the next tip is just a general one it goes for pretty much every car that you'll ever inspect in your life the basics so when you're going to see a car especially a private sale it will be check tires check to make sure that um, all the instrument functions are working inside check your oil and check for leaks so have the car running look underneath the vehicle see if there's any drops Get it up to operating temperature when driving. Make sure that the gauge stays um, at the midpoint, so around 90. You don't want to get knocked too hot or you could have overheating issues. And they are the fundamental sides of it. Of course, there is a lot more checks that you, you can do, but when you're just talking about having a general perspective on it, you want to make sure your tires are good. When you're braking, you don't want any brake vibration or you don't want any roughness. Uh, try to bring it over on an uneven patch so you can hear if there's any suspension noises or drop links or ball joint play or any of that. Um, if you're driving on all smooth roads on the test drive, it can be difficult to pick up any of them items. Uh, have the bonnet open. Uh, have a have a light with you have a good visual inspection if you have um alloy wheels on the vehicle with wide spokes so there's gaps in between you can check um brakes a lot of the time so you'll be able to see the depth of brake pad that's left you can also see the condition of the discs and these are all just visual checks that are very quick very simple when you're going around the car also depending on the type of car if you're buying a diesel um, if you get somebody to start it up for you and you stand at the back of the vehicle you can see if it's smoky giving it a rev as well you can see if there's any issues coming out from the exhaust and they're pretty much all the general um, the general ones the leaks around um, is is very noticeable so any oil leaks water leaks power steering leaks or any transmission leaks of any kind if you give a good look underneath I know that there might be under shields on some but you can get a good idea from the top side as well when you're um, an inspection light to bring with you is very important um, or else use the light in your phone and 
make sure that you go around the back of the engine front of the engine and either side once you have that checked done you can move on to the next okay so when you're doing the road test it is very important not to get put off by the person that's selling the car if you have someone that's talking an awful lot in the passenger seat that is selling it it can be a side that they're trying to distract you from a problem so the likes of when you're when you're changing gears is it completely smooth when you're changing gears when you're turning a corner do you have full traction on that is there any locking noise from the cv joint on either side is there any rumble from a release bearing when you're letting off on the clutch is uh, if it's an automatic is the transmission operating smoothly is it operating smoothly in all of the different um settings of gear one two three and drive are you finding that it's when you're braking dropping down in all of those gear my fourth tip um spans across pretty much all countries as well is if it's an expensive car a very expensive car always run a check there is different checks in different countries and you will want to make sure you do the correct background check for yours so you're checking to see if there's any uh, higher purchase or if there's any money owed on the vehicle if it was ever stolen or recovered if it was ever a taxi and making sure that the mileages or logbook service or any of them things is correct with the vehicle with the vehicle if it was ever stolen or stolen or recovered will also show up on a lot of these checks another tip i have is always try and make sure that you buy a vehicle when the car is cold you can come across um you can come across problems with cars that don't show up when they're uh, when they're heated up like if there's a time and chain in a vehicle and it doesn't make any noises when it heats up that's one of them that knock on initial rattle so it's always like there is a an, another few items that also can only show up when it's cold so it's a good idea to get to the car when it hasn't been driven so you're going to see the check and the car has been just just stationary and that way when you're heating it up you're seeing it from very cold all the way to operating temperature and you're testing it in both environments if you get to see it when it's only hot it's very hard to wait enough time to see if any of those problems come up and the reality is you probably won't have time um, to wait to check them things so buying a car that's common to the market gives the massive advantage of parts availability and parts pricing. So what I do and when when I moved to Oz is I made sure that I bought something that I knew about first and foremost and that was common to the market. So the cars I was looking at was four cylinders the majority because V6, V8s, V10s all that sort of thing is not common to our market and therefore I would have worked on four cylinders a lot more. So I was looking at Mitsubishis, I was looking at Hondas, I was looking at Fords. They were my three main ones. Um, having a family, uh, I wanted a hatchback and I wanted something with quite a large boot space. So uh, I was narrowing it down and I narrowed it down to a Ford Focus. Now the pricing on Fords is very good over here, so you get parts readily available and um, there's no difficulty whatsoever in any of the parts you're looking for. Same day delivery um, and uh, very cost effective, so the pricing on them is good. If you were to get, let's say, something that's rare to the market, that completely changes. The pricing is very high and it also is a lot harder to get parts, so you're going to be waiting two to three days, especially in I'm here in Western Australia you might have to get the parts from over east which can take a, a couple of days at least to get over now when I started looking I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to work on the vehicle myself and any problems that came up I would be able to uh, repair those out of hours on my own time so uh, I don't advise people to stay away from it if they're not a mechanic or they're not repairing cars themselves but an automatic transmission was one that I stayed away from personally because if an auto um, gives trouble I'm not going to be able to do that repair myself. I haven't done a ton with automatic uh, transmissions and I know that they're a lot more expensive to repair. Um, the 
forged um, gearbox for example doesn't give a lot of problems and the only thing I would be looking at would be clutch release bearing and the the likes of them problems were all all of them I can do myself and I would be able to do it in a day or over the course of a couple of evenings to carry out the repair I would just have to have a driveway free or a shed free and jack up the vehicle a little bit to be able to do it something for you to think about if there is a very common uh, vehicle that has a lot of forums as well especially in that uh, country that you're going to you might find that you can get help a lot easier too from people on it so um, if Ford have a very strong forum over here and you're not sure of a problem you could post that up and you might be able to get help from guys a lot easier than them So this next tip is more general and it doesn't really go for absolutely everything to do with the inspection. Um, but the overall appearance and how the car comes across is a good indication some of the time to how the car is. Now if you're going to a car yard they can clean it up and do a valet and all that and you have no idea if that car was really maintained or if it was badly maintained so it's hard to gauge it there. But on a private sale, uh, if the car is clean on the outside and very clean on the inside, it can be a good indication that the car was well maintained and that um, a car that you go to and is very dirty straight away and isn't well, like if, they, if you go to it and they didn't even bother washing it before they're trying to sell it, uh, it can be a it can be a good indicator that the owner hasn't really looked after it that well. And that is it guys, I tried to make this list as short and sweet as possible. I know there's much more that we could add to this list if we wanted to, but I tried to compress it so that if you were doing this yourself that you would be able to um, just check over them, small few things, and feel a lot more confident about the purchase of the vehicle. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.